All right, y'all, this is the Back to the Boom Bap Podcast, and I'm your host, Monev 360 and I'm excited to talk to today's guest. When I first heard his beats, it was probably whenever Corner Store Classic by Sky Zoo came out. I don't even think I knew what he looked like back then. But he's a member of the Knife Wonders <laughs> production crew called The Soul Council. He's worked with Rhapsody, the late great Mac Miller, T.I., Anthony Hamilton, and many more. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome Eric G to the podcast. <laughs> What's up, right. man? What's going on? <laughs> Nothing. Just uh, working a lot. Working, not working, but just living. But then I, I just been buying instruments and stuff. That's what's up. With, yeah. with, with what little money I make. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. I, How about you? What's going on with you, man? What's going on with me? So, pretty similar, you know. Just uh, working, trying, you know, trying to trying to make ends meet, but you know, doing doing what I love yeah, to do. I think that, I think the way to make. I think I'm, I'm in the same boat, but at the same time, it's like, like I think making ends meet is more like, uh, like to think about like trying to make ends meet is like, it, uh, like like uh, will be will produce the opposite effect. So it's like as soon as you stop thinking or like like making that the thing like it'll it might be like hard for a minute i think and then it'll just like you'll fall right where you're supposed to like like a plinko right. board you know right, you land right. on a ten thousand dollar one yeah. change your perspective yeah hmm. i like that so uh you're a member of the soul council um which is a producer collective started by night wonder um who are the current members of the soul council uh, ninth wonder is you know like you said and uh yeah. crisis uh e jones knots uh knots did uh barry bonds for kanye yep. he did yeah you have uh, you know tons of like that yeah tons of things bust bust yeah, around uh, and stuff. <laughs> uh <laughs> or uh cash um uh-huh. who did i say so far jones yeah, me, e. Jones, Knife Wonder, of course you. Oh, um, amp, 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 amp. Yep. Yeah, I, I should have been counting. I, I'm so bad at this. I also am stoned, so don't. I mean, you can just do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Amp cash, <laughs> amp cash crisis, amp cash crisis, not ninth. Okay. And me. Yeah. Um, oh, and so- soundtrack. soundtrack, soundtrack, yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, 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 soundtrack. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yes. Ah, like, I, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I saw yeah, one soundtrack. time that High Tech was no, um, a member of Soul Council. Was is he um, still in Soul Soul Council? Was he ever in um, Soul Council? Well, who soundtrack? Um, High Tech. High Tech. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that necessarily or whatever, but that's for a moment. Yeah, there was a time where that was happening. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. sorry. It's good <laughs> podcast good. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be good, man. I love it. <laughs> so since um, since you guys are a squad of producers, you know, like all the Jamla artists, um, Ruben Benson and Rhapsody, um, they can just take their pick from, you know, the batches of beats that you all make. Like, is that kind of how it works yeah. when, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, like, with, like, everything I do, like, priority goes to, like, rap and the label, like, as well as, like, Ian and uh, uh, Swank and Draft and stuff like that. Like, whoever, you yeah. know, like, ever, everyone on the label. Yeah, it's, like, just my priority because it's, like, like, ninth saw something in me before i could see it in myself you know and like yeah. it like that i can never like it's not like you feel like you owe somebody but there's no way you can really repay somebody for that type of look you know it's just like uh like like i've grown over the years and stuff and like realized like oh shit like i i didn't know what other people saw in me that was like making them like yeah like fuck with me or something it's like it's just so it's such a weird thing to like not see Cause like you have to be sort of confident to like get to a level of, of respect with certain people, and then it's just like, like, like I just always saw myself as like just like a loser, you know? What I'm 
<laughs> I got not, not at all, man. Like no, not no, <laughs> in, over the last like three, yeah. the last like three years, I've gotten like I, I like see my see what they saw, which is cool because they like like ninth and rap and cash and crisis. Everybody, everybody over there, like Tia and stuff like uh, Vince. Have they've just like like. Uh, been patient feels as like, fuck. Yeah, that feels like family, <laughs> yeah, yeah. family, right? That's that's what it. That's what yeah, it. Oh, looks yeah, 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 oh yeah. Outside, and sometimes it's in, rap, you know. Gives, rap gives me the tough love and stuff, but like, there's value in that, you know. Like, yeah. but her and I are like brother and sister. Like, we're like best friends, you know. That's what's up. Was that the? Did I answer the question? I don't even remember what the question was. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you answered the question. <laughs> and and um. Uh, and kind of like if, if you kind of lean the other way, uh, the opposite way oh, that you kind of because you were kind of getting out of, the, out of this when you go uh, yeah, that way, you're going out of the shot. Well, you know, shit. Of, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, because it's backwards, yeah, yeah, because it's back. I, I got I get mixed up with that too, but uh, yeah. but yeah, um, and I'm pretty sure that like it's it's kind of like iron sharpens iron, you know, being on a production team like that with so many heavy hitters. That you yeah. know, you hear somebody else making a, a beat, you're like, oh yeah, like friendly competition. Let me oh, go. Oh God, like, like, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think the average person, or not, not to say like anything like that, but but like, I don't think like like, cause I I never knew. I I was always getting like complaints at all the apartments that like I lived at. Like uh-huh. just for being like as loud as I am, because I like to make beats hella loud. And so like when I first got there, it was just like uh, I got a burp again. All this leaning got in my guts, putting the gas out. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. All right. Um, uh, I just remember like like ninth first time I ever seen him make beats. Uh, sorry. Damn. I just ate before this. I, the, what I was doing before we got on, I was putting food away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ate a little bit <laughs> earlier. Probably was like an hour or so ago. <laughs> like, I, I didn't even put that away. Hot sauce. Was that hot yeah. sauce? But I, I'm not doing a Hillary Clinton, though. I, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm, <laughs> uh, no, but when I got there, it's like, like the, how loud he was when he made beats was like, max levels of like he'd like blow out like big speakers, out speakers. Like, okay yeah That's but it's so <laughs> dope because it just filled the i like he sees color within his music too and shit and like yeah. whatever so that shit just filled up the room though like playing it like that so every so you imagine it's all those it's all of us down there uh or in north carolina and like it's like going there like every day sometimes you, i wouldn't be there for like a week because you know whatever but like just like pretty much every day and just like every room is just like blaring Music like blasting like, <laughs> and then you shut it and then it's just like <laughs> wow okay. but, okay. but then we're yeah. all doing it at the same time and it's like sometimes you can get like discouraged and shit just be like fuck like because you, you know like if you make something one day and then do you make music yeah, I make yeah, music as well. Yeah, I um, produce and stuff. I, I actually rap too, you know. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just started singing and shit, so I'm doing both things now too. But like, uh, like just like you might be having a day, and especially around that, it's like I want to show up and I want to do as good as I can. Like, and there, it's also like family shit too. But it's like I want to be there and like working because it's like it means right. so much to me and whatever. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I. I like sometimes you do you like make like one beat it took way too long and it's like you're like it's just mid or whatever but then and then you go in the other room and it's like crisis is in there just like Vaughn is like fifth beat and they're all just fire, yeah. you know? <laughs> just like ah like I just like but it, it, it definitely it's gotta it definitely help you though. it's gotta help you even in those times no, though, because you'll be like oh you. yeah you no, it may, yeah, it sharpens later. the shit out of you. Like, I can't believe yeah. that that like, <laughs> Ninth Wonder and everybody like like to this day like still like continues to like support me and like and like like for him to take like a risk like that or whatever or you know just to like be like yeah, it's just wild to me. Like, it's cool because I'm I mean I'm the only white guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's cool, kind of though. You know, you got the heat, man. It don't 
that doesn't you know it don't matter in hip hop when you it's when you when you prove cool. yourself and you you make you know you make your name known we don't care <laughs> yeah yeah but like that's just like bill evans it's like bill evans plays piano on the kind of blue and it's like i've been so into miles davis for years and years and years and i just never even knew that like the guy that played piano on that album like was a white guy and it's like interesting uh-huh. that i know so much about miles and not know about him so it makes it kind of gives me a thing to think about like where like it's kind of like as a musician in general especially with where all music comes from and stuff as a white guy in the mix or whatever it's kind of like i like how he carried himself like he played the piano with his head down you know schroeder from peanuts uh-huh yeah uh-huh yep <laughs> the play he, he his i think his like form his figure like you know like the hunchback like that like, yeah like he's like hunched, bill, hunched, if, you, if you google bill evans if you google bill evans uh playing piano or something you'll see what i mean it's like it's like where they drew it from and i think i don't know i think gil evans did the soundtrack but whatever i don't for peanuts but but either way it's like uh yeah 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 that's what's up and you know you were talking about knife wonder so i i actually wanted to know um how did you and and knife wonder uh first meet um uh we i was um uh on an album uh sky zoo's album uh the salvation i had like three songs on there uh-huh. <clears throat> and i had been out to new york like um uh, once before for like torre's release like daily operations so i already knew like torre yeah and i think i met sky zoo through torre but anyway so there, there was the release party for that album and ninth was on Torre's album and he was on Sky's album, but he's he was appearing at like Pete Rock came to Torre's uh, release party, but at Sky's like Ninth was there, and uh, I knew he was gonna be there, and I like he like inspired me to uh, start because he's so resourceful, like he's like the pioneer of like yeah. free loops pretty much, you know. So it's like oh, yeah. that whole idea of like being like. Like it doesn't matter what you use. Like I still yeah. do that. To, I play all my stuff now on like a children's drum set, you know, just because it's like it's like physical fruity loops. But like, uh, like yeah, just just I was attracted to that. Like it's like it's like we're attracted to like attainability or something, you know. Like like yeah. there's something about being dope but being flawed at the same time. Not flawed, but you know what I mean. Like just not giving a fuck. Right, you know? right. And keep yeah. keeping the music raw, like you know, and doing it your it, way. It makes me like I could do that probably or whatever if i'm musical i could I, not that you think you can but you're just so hyped that he's just like i see the computer man he did he did, yeah. he did a fucking <laughs> beat society with a tower computer like a dell you know right not it's... adele the white lady but a dell computer you know right yeah but so so i was on that album with him so i knew he was gonna be at that thing and then when i got there he like put his arm around me there's like a picture of it on on google or something but like he was just like uh He's like, this guy right here, that is like the best song on the album, like best beats or, or best beat. And I'm uh-huh. like, Man, that's tight. And his arms are and stuff. And like, he's like, uh, uh, I don't know, just taking pictures with him and stuff. But the, the air always has been for like, you'd never expect by looking at him. That's what everyone said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, dude, I just met him there. And then I was, so hyped like that after that i was like ah because like it was like the coolest <laughs> moment so after that i moved to new york and then i uh lived there for a little bit and then i would since i've made that connection like and i've been sending stuff to like uh remo and rhapsody and shit like uh-huh. that back then and crisis too i had met him at like a um i guess sean or a book uh buckshot show i think but uh in seattle but like uh in new york they would be there more frequently because it's like it's a hub you know from north carolina yeah, yeah and so like whenever they'd come there i'd make it a point to like show up at the event or like whatever just because like you know we already have like a you know i'm already working with the artists and stuff and then eventually throughout doing that in new york he called me and like signed me to the, his thing or like he was just like welcome to the soul council whatever and i was like hell yeah <laughs> and then uh oh, man, you, and then invited. everything 
every New York visit after that, he just basically like be like, "When are you gonna come to Carolina, man?" Like saying, "Move there." And so eventually, mm-hmm. it, I like got worn out, and I just like went to North Carolina, and I lived there for like three or four years. Where did you live at before you um, before you had first moved to New York? Uh, Seattle. Seattle. And, and I was okay. born in Auburn, Washington. It's like South Seattle, south of Seattle. Okay. Yeah. And um, so let's um, let's go back to the beginning of, of like you as a producer. Uh, what was it that you um, first heard that inspired you to make your first beat? I have like a mixed memory of exactly like because I don't think it was like really in succession like that. I think it was like right, right. It's, I know it's kind yeah. of broad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll give a broad like whatever I, I, it was like around the time like pete instrumentals came out and like uh okay i was like rocking like a burnt cd of like pete instrumentals and i gave i remember i gave one to my friend and uh sorry pete uh, <laughs> but uh, uh yeah. <laughs> bootleg. Yeah, bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> no but mr pete rock i'm sorry uh <laughs> but, yeah but uh no but but uh and i was already into like premiere and like wu-tang because of my cousin oh yeah me too (laughs) so like i was like already there with hip-hop and before that it was like nirvana and like like i'll only say the good ones so like it was like nirvana (laughs) i don't want to say the other (laughs) city bands uh but like yeah like just that whole early 90s like 93 shit was just like nirvana snoop dogg like like you know just that everything time like like that's 20 years ago to this year which is super dope you know hella dope shit's gonna come out this year uh or like this year next year it's like a genesis for the new shit but uh uh what was it what were we talking about Sorry. um what um what inspired you to um to start making beats the first time basically like oh yeah so pete rock peter metal and stuff and then uh I was listening to like Fantastic Volume Two and shit with my friends, like skateboarding and okay. stuff. Yeah, and then yep. uh, Village. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I was like, I was like, still like weird at that time though. I was like, kind of like, like got it, but didn't get it because I, I like, it was so good that it seemed unattainable to me, sort of like the way Dilla's beats were, because it was just like, right, right. You really hear the tops, but nines were like. Ding, ding. Uh. <laughs> like, like weird ass like ignorant like chops you know yeah and like like it was like a stem off premiere but even but then nights using the computer and i got a computer in the office like or whatever like 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 where my dad like does his paperwork or whatever you know like paperwork like whatever i don't know <laughs> but like <laughs> like so it's like i got a you can just get a demo of fruity and then my friend rashad he had a uh like he always like used computers and knew how to get cracked software and stuff. So I just like got fruity like that. And then I just started fucking with it. I remember though, the first beat I did make, it was because it was, I was using fruity loops, but Uh actually, no, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I I, I started, well, no, that was like the first, the first time I actually was like, Oh shit, I made a real beat or something. But, but we used to, we used to use MTV music generator and then I we had a demo version too. of that i had a friend in college oh. that that made beats on that yep I yeah know so that. that's where we started but 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 mm-hmm. you in the demo you couldn't save to your memory card or whatever so you had yeah. to like you had to figure out how to jimmy rig the like audio out of the tv or VCR right. or whatever mm-hmm. and then record it onto tapes which was sick though and, and like, i wish i had those still that'd be so tight but yeah but basically fruity loops though okay and it was that island drum break i remember i used that and like because i already knew how to chop up stuff because i was editing videos in school like skate videos so i, I already knew how to like in adobe so you, you stuff when you first got on um fl you you already were like sampling and stuff you ne- never well, did the stock making, sounds well yeah i was using like mtv music generator but i understood sampling like i was like oh because my rashad's brother also uh, his older brother boopy he like made uh uh beats on like an npc so i'd be around him and his brother and stuff like like just growing up and i was like and that's so tight like, like yeah. he was beat <laughs> fire too like he's super tight but yeah uh, yeah yes yeah so um 
Yeah, so you said you were using um, first um, MTV Music Generator, then FL Studio. <laughs> so like, what do you, um, what are you currently using when you make your beats? Um, now I'm using a drum set, a piano, a guitar, and a microphone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm still recording into Fruity, but I'm not I'm I'm writing songs and doing covers and stuff. Like I I'm doing it like Prince does or did. Yeah, you like, like, you know how Prince played every instrument? Going. Huh? What was that? Yeah, you know how Prince like played every instrument? Oh yeah, yeah. Like I like what I'm doing, so I'm like coming up with all like I'm gonna put out a cover of something soon, but I've already got one pretty much done, but it's just I gotta like I just want the vocal to be like it has to be a good thing because I'm covering someone else's song. But then after I get this thing nailed down, I'll be able to just like willy nilly make stuff up and it'll be super fun. Because I didn't know I could sing and like play all these instruments. Like I all these years, you didn't know you could time. sing. <laughs> I did. I, maybe I couldn't. But I don't know. That's just, it's like the same thing with like earlier. Just like I used to just be hella insecure or something. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand that. And I mean, like yeah. I said, it's, you know, I, I see it as like you're growing, man. You know, you've been been making beats and stuff, and just evolving into the next thing that you that you'll be be doing. You know. So. Yeah, and also I, I think of it like this: it's like if you're gonna be, if someone's gonna take you under their wing the way that Ninth did and stuff, it's kind of like Ninth grew with his production. Like he went from Fruity to the MPC to back to Machine. Fruity to yep. then Machine. Yeah, but it's like it's sort of this is like my version of that and we, we would be about the same age now when he was doing that so like i uh yeah i just look at it like that and, I, and i'm also in hella influenced by terrace martin like just being around him and stuff and like just seeing like how real musicians and whatever like seeing what looking at the club that i'm gonna be a part of or whatever you know so it's like oh and like it's i always learn so much without having to ask questions or nothing or be told anything you just observe yeah it's like so sick how simple everything is it's just all about confidence man yeah that's what's up and so like um as far as your um your drum kits on like beats that you that that you've done in the past did you use um did you get your drums from like vinyl or did you use drum kits yeah. or yeah all of it like i use vinyl or you know i used to sample records before i moved to new york but then i just like it was too much weight to carry over like a collection of records and i figured out how to use like soul seek and shit you know yeah yeah so like like i would just download, download. Stuff. And i started thinking it was kind of tight like a new version of like uh digging or something because it was like oh the whole record store and everything and even the beat yeah. machine and stuff is all in my laptop that's crazy you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just made it i just thought of it like that but uh yeah drums come from anywhere uh but now that's what i like it like and i would still eq them and stuff but i'm such a non-computer person like i hate yeah computers. like so like now it's just cool because it's like now i got this children's drum set that i have to like kind of like modify to be a, like the sound i want to record and stuff and it's like no one else is going to be able to have those like and stuff and it's like it's like basically like over the years like you kind of like become you can become the sample you know After right right so you can do your yeah. own make your own drums now and, and yeah i'm not trying to say that it was like it never felt like learning like any instrument now i can play piano guitar and every i can play drums every i've been playing drums for not been playing but when i was eight i did but yeah like it's just i think it's like a cool it's just like a really uh fulfilling to me right now it's like i'm super inspired yeah to, like really show because like my friend cricket she's uh she lives downtown la where i live and she's like she was on like american idol when she was like 16 or 17 or something like that and she made it to uh -huh. like las vegas and stuff but then she's had a harder life like after that like with losing her uh like this this like some sad shit. and then but uh -huh. she's like she meeting her was like we're not like they, we're like brother and sister like we're like weird aliens together or something but she's like like been telling me like since she can sing and her voice is like amazing like 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 you know when people can hold a note like like 
I'm not even gonna try it, but like just like hold a note at a certain volume, but it's like a it's right, not straining. right. Held it out. Like she's amazing, and we live in these loft buildings that have these hallways that reverberate. She'll sing, and she's like, oh, I don't know, I'm whatever. It's like okay, but she she encouraged me to like. She's like, you have a good voice because she knows singing, you know. And then I was like, oh, really? She's like, and then I just started doing it, and she, uh, the first piano or keyboard I had was from her, uh, like down here. And then I really started like, oh, I can play this thing. And then she like, like, yeah, take it then. And then because she, she's tight. And then this guitar over here, she get. And then it just everything just came to me though, like really easily. And it's like, yeah. I don't know. I, I think don't know. it's a natural. Thing. Like, it's a nat. It's, yeah. it's gotta be natural, and like, and it seems like you. Um, you know um you don't overthink it you just you just feel that's that's what i'm getting yeah from maybe you. like use it sorry sorry i'm over talking you my bad i i'm just thinking like it's it's like it it really makes you realize like what talent is and then the difference between talent and skill you know right because it's like basquiat's talented you know oh yeah the painter yeah. like so but but skill it's like he's drawing like a toddler so you couldn't really gauge him that way but it's like the talent outweighs the skill you know mm -hmm. yeah i don't want no skilled music you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't want that i don't want to listen to something like that like that's what's so ill about it's like ninth has like perfect pitch you know but he's yeah. just like i'm fucking with this like that's what that's what's so sick to me like you know and um and as far as with um with drums what would um would you consider any any drums to be bad like would that um depend on how they're eq'd or, or if the drum programming is off like too um it's too busy or it's too off beat what uh what what do you think about that are there are there any bad drums yeah just ones that don't that aren't in the pocket like it's like you can always make anything work i tend to not like like papery sounding like thin yeah. ones but like uh it's really just yeah about the pocket and that's what i'm kind of realizing too is like like within loops and shit like like if it's just like a couple bars or whatever it is like or a bar or even like it's like to be able to create you create like a pattern sort of like in the air of just like being like you can go yeah. off and leave different spaces but at the end of the day the physics got to be the same for it to have uh, like the rhythm right and you wouldn't think about it, i don't think about it that way but like now that i'm recording and like not quantizing stuff i'm starting to realize like how loops can like lean back and shit like that you know right, what i mean right so i think that's ill but uh, no i wouldn't say anything's bad i just think that we all know what's up you know like you hear something you hear something you know <laughs> like yeah yeah like, you and know if, and, you if, know and if someone <laughs> the, there is something though that a lot of times like people don't uh, some people can't really fully grasp what i think the pocket is like it's like I, right. you know certain it's just like it's not a rhythmic thing but it's like they'll be like this beats tight and then it's like am i i'm not being over tech it's just like this the hi-hats landing weird like on the snare or the snares off with the sample snare that's in the background but it's like hitting different times like too early it's just like annoying like it's kind of like having like a scab that's ready to come off and you don't just flick yeah. it off like you know there there is a there is a sweet spot it's a it's a sweet spot where you you can you can make it loose but if you make it too loose then it's not true it's all. but knowledge <laughs> knowledge that mama beat you know yeah knowledge the kendrick song mom uh mama like uh -huh. i love that song He's, like that sloppy <laughs> you know like that's it like he holds it together he like it's it's sort of like a metaphor for life where it's like uh you hold it together just enough before it falls apart you know that's kind of like we go through times like that too so music is such a right yeah and um tell me the story of your producer tag is that is that your voice on that saying Eric? no it's a, <laughs> it's this ah oh, fuck i know his name <laughs> well whatever i uh he's a, a north carolina radio guy but someone i was working with back in the day uh like just sent him to me like he he worked at a radio station and he had this guy that does ads like that's like how are you doing or whatever like like yeah you know, I, I don't know that i'm doing i don't have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. But like, like like he just did he worked at a radio station he's a guy that had that voice like a white guy you'd expect that like a car salesman guy that's like you know yeah like uh, 
but so i and then it said but they used to say like eric g and like like i just thought it sounded funny because he his like rhythm with the way he talked it's like just cutting it at the eric because he was expecting to say g it just sound makes that's what makes it sound funny because it's like it's it's like what's well, like eric like abrupt because it's like i cut the g yeah. off because i just <laughs> i always didn't really want to like i always wanted to just have my name be like my first name not like that but just like no one calls me eric g they ended up calling me that because i did that but i'm glad i didn't like name myself like something wild you know yeah yeah that it was my real name yeah it's dope because it's it's quick and it's just <laughs> it's just enough it's just enough that when i hear it, like oh, okay that's Eric G, you know. <laughs> the funniest ones, I I low key want to like start using them like when I'm doing, uh, like 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 doing like full songs of all played stuff, but then just having it be like, it 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 Eric G beats, like some one of those like whack ones that's like a, that sounds sounds like a hot girl like saying their yeah. shit, you know. <laughs> like like I, I don't know. I I think those are just like damn. But like you're in it for something else that that I'm not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And like, um, even though you have the um, the producer tag, um, I, I always wanted to know, like, are you one of those producers who likes to be behind the scenes rather than in the spotlight? Uh, yeah, I guess, but but not. I wouldn't even really think about it like that. I'm just like kind of maneuvering through life how it comes at me and whatever. So, like, uh, I don't know. I just think that like. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What was the question again? Sorry, I'm getting. Oh, confused. I mean, well, you kind of you kind of answered it though. Like um, you said, you you don't you don't really look at it that way. But it was about like um, you know, you being. Um, do you like to be behind the scenes rather than some oh, like? Yeah, kind of no, no, profile? no. I, I, I don't think so. I think that like I have been behind the scenes, but I think that like uh, I, I so I did a beat showcase like not too long ago i think it was like in 2022 but it was in la and stuff and um like i a lot of the time like i just talked a lot at the beginning of the set and then in between like songs i was just playing beats that i did or whatever it was just like one of those type of things but i talked a lot and stuff and people were like laughing and stuff and i was like i like realized like that it's like how fulfilling it is to like do something like that you know it's yeah. like people were like enjoying it and shit and it was like whoa so like I don't know i think i'm probably like a performer type person i just didn't really get it fully but but i'm like again like with the, the play and everything and whatever like i i think that we'll see you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and um you told me earlier um kind of how you met uh sky zoo but um i i wanted to um kind of ask you a different question about um on um sky zoo's album the salvation for what it's worth is one of my uh favorite songs on there so like i just mm -hmm. kind of wanted to know like um the what you remember about um the making of that song and you know whenever he picked that track and stuff oh yeah um that's the one that ninth was talking about at the release thing that's like how we met like you, you were saying he's like he has the best <laughs> song on the album it was that song so okay. but that that beat <laughs> guys you had an idea for that song and i tried like actually hella different like samples and different like tries i like it's like trying to hit the bullseye or something it was yeah. it took a while for me to do actually it was now that i think about it but yeah it was his idea and stuff not necessarily the sample but like he, the feel i think he said um he wanted something like uh shit. yeah what was it uh what's the alchemist uh is it we gonna make it we're gonna make it um we with uh the jadakus uh, that's yeah. it uh-huh i did that off but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah like uh, he i think he was saying like something like that but something also like um something off jay-z shit like maybe like dead presidents or something like that like something like like um um like a moody two. song like uh and kind of serious for like a story type that that type of deal like yeah 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 something like that yeah so that that's how that one worked out and then i just like found that sample and i know it's been used and stuff but it's it's tight because it was just i used the snares from the the very beginning of the song goes 
I get a sample. So yeah. I, you just, I just use the snare and I put it over itself and lined it up and I just put a kick under it. And, and then I think bass, but I don't even know about that. I think I might just use the bass, bass from the sample. Just how it like straight loop. And yeah, then it's a loop, my, but it like, worked. It worked. That, that was one of the one of the times when a loop was, was all it needed, you know. <laughs> was, that's why I was hella proud of that because ninth like not for ninth to say it like that and then it, for it to be a loop was kind of like that's tight yeah. not, like because you know like like that seems like some it, from an ego standpoint it like seems like some dilla shit or something you know because like yeah. he'll be just something you'll find to be like you think he made a whole keyboard beat out of something and then it's just like oh uh, you know he looped some electronic record or something you know right right <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um and when you know what I notice about your tracks is that you know you you pick really great samples. Um, so in in the days when you were you know sampling and stuff a lot for your tracks, well, I'm still gonna sample. I'm not saying I'm not saying yeah, or, I'm never. You, yeah, you still are. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just I'm just like I'm just like uh, I just love music so much. So I, I I figure I might as well pay it its uh, proper due and like uh, figure it all out. You know. Yeah. So, a lot of people do this is what i'm doing and they fucking blow it like you know yeah it's, I, i've it's, like like people get like instruments and like gear and stuff and then they'll just start fucking like just making terrible music and like dressing weird and shit but like yeah, i i, I, I <laughs> you gotta I stay cool with so it and not and not, like, uh, not fall into that not fall into that trap <laughs> <laughs> no i know i know I, I need everyone to be super brutally honest with me that's what i'm saying like just don't like, no, one, no one gas me up please yeah like my voice is hoarse from singing and shit lately like that's what it's but it's crazy to like post shit on like lines that's like your voice like singing and then like just be cool with it like like you would think that you know when you first heard your voice recorded ever or something and then you yeah, always like, like it think, yeah. you know, like <laughs> or if you sing and record yourself singing you're like jesus i'm awful you know like i'm right. terrible like but then it's like to get to a point where it's like fuck it like it's kind of like sick like it's like i think that like thundercat like went through this type of shit too like when he started singing he was like i guess i'm singing now yeah. like it's part of it like I, that's yeah. how i feel too yeah i guess you gotta find that balance where you care what other people think but you don't care what other people think you know you're putting it yeah, out but well, it, you, I, like, that balance you know. is basically i think that balance just is like uh uh like you just know it's fire you know because yeah. it's like you can't lie to yourself that much you know like it's right like, you don't want to yeah you don't want to be delusional i get i get that yeah and it's also like if you're feeling something from it and whatever and it's not you don't even you're never gonna have to really necessarily ask somebody what they think you know what i mean like not no cocky shit but like you always want input or whatever but it's like a lot of input just kind of comes from a place of commerce and it's not really from a place of art you know yeah like it's comes from a place of like well it won't like it's it's either dope or it's not that's really all it is you know yeah and like and like for your samples like to, do pick, you... to pick the parts that... what, sorry, what? <laughs> oh oh um you go ahead you uh Finish what you're going to say. I was just gonna say like to, for, to to pick apart like uh I don't think anyone I don't think Quincy Jones would like pick apart like uh I mean in the, maybe if he was making it but at the product end of it it's like even if the mix is terrible and stuff it's still gonna be like you can see what the song is you know yeah so it's like it's either good or not I guess I don't know I I'm, it, I'm just being redundant <laughs> you you all good man yeah um. <laughs> And and I've um I've met Rhapsody on two or three occasions, um, but as someone like you that yeah, and who's worked with her directly, and you know earlier you said you know you all are like brother and sister. Like, what's it what's it like working with rap? Um, funny. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, funny, but like no fucking around sort of okay yeah like yeah yeah like when she's she's goofy and stuff but she takes the music hella serious like you know what i'm saying so yeah, uh that. and you know like i always feel like when i go to the studio can't, and shit can't that, sleep. we can't oh, my, well, see <laughs> hey man my production team's lacking <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh 
what was that uh oh yeah but uh every time i'm at the studio and stuff like or whatever it's someone else's time so i always feel like a lot of pressure like that but so i but the pressure that i feel isn't from like my skill level or nothing it's from like like i i hate computers and like i only know how to use certain things on the computer like like that yeah. like i'm not that up on technology or whatever but it's just not really my thing that i'm hella impatient with it and then just to have people behind you like being like like move that like this it's like uh yeah like, I'm, be, I'm like i'm like what i'm now doing is like i'll use whatever but i'm only bringing i'm bringing my hands and maybe like a hard drive to the studio i'm not bringing a laptop you know yeah yeah whatever i don't want to do that i'm not the computer guy like yeah i'm not doing none of that <laughs> Unless it's for myself and i'm alone and i have time to process what i'm doing it's like I don't, yeah I, don't, I can't I, under someone else's pressure was using dealing with samples and like what i want to do with them and stuff i don't really do well but playing music like and just doing like whatever that's super relieving to me and it's like i'm actually making dope songs and stuff now. So i'm like what what, what? Yeah, that's what's yeah. up. I, like I said, I would I would have never known that you know you felt that way about computers because you know the way the way your tracks sound and stuff is like, you know you you figure you figure it out enough. <laughs> yeah, but but it's like I think maybe I wore myself out a little bit like just being like meticulous and I've I've made thousands and thousands and thousands of beats using thousands and thousands and thousands of samples, you know. So it's yeah. like I just like. uh and I grew up musical, like, not like in the music. My dad played guitar, and I just played drums when I was eight years old. And just kind of like, he told me recently that when I got drums and stuff, he said that I didn't really have to learn them. He said I just like kind of yeah. like, sh someone showed me how, but I could play like right away. And I didn't know that, but that's crazy to me. And so it's like, I think that's how everything, el everything else is kind of unfolding, you know? And it's like, now that i can record them with the same mics that like nirvana used or or countless others you know yeah like is super tight like and just all the influences and people that i have behind me it's like uh, it's tight like I'm, I'm like super elated about the music i'm doing now okay and also uh what what's it uh like working with um ruben vincent you know the uh the newest the newest kid on the on the block at jamla yeah he's super talented like just and skilled you know so that's yeah. a motherfucker but uh <laughs> yeah he's he's we just rap battle and stuff but now that like i don't know he's really going hard like now so like and he's got stuff going on with like rock and stuff like that so with rock nation but like he's it's like jamla all day but i'm just saying like it's good for his like he's on he's he's a beast and he's super dedicated like it's yeah, like kind of yeah. like i'm starting to understand like this type of stuff where night that ninth used to like like put me on is sort of like what i could see like oh like this kid means it like ruben like fucking means it you know yeah yeah i can definitely see that yeah like and that, but so like now that i could see like what ninth saw in someone like me or him or whatever but the age difference and all this but I could actually look at him and be like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, dedication is a motherfucker, you know? Oh, yeah. I use two motherfuckers. I got to stop. This is being recorded. <laughs> y'all <you're laughs> <all> good, man. <laughs> all right. And um, the track that you did for the uh, late, great Mac Miller called 2009, uh, that's a beautiful track. Like, you know, the strings in the intro, the pianos, the finger snap snares. Like, how did I didn't that do the strings, though. Someone else did the strings. Uh, okay. Separate from that. Yeah. I just made that beat. It's a. Uh, uh, yeah, I just did the. Yeah, that, I just made that beat in the on a day. And I lived in Seattle at the time, and I just it was just like I would be making beats every day, like as many as I could, as good as I could possibly do them, and like I was working, I was like riding a bike for like Postmates probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> uh which i mean like fuck that was super hard but i was like i was probably so fucking fit at the time uh but uh like he just had come through and i had met him uh this is after i lived in north carolina so i met him uh in north carolina and like through all uh -huh. of that like i would do it. but like he was coming through seattle and this is like when he was like dating like ariana grande and stuff yeah and like they yeah they just came through and then I, we went to the studio a few times my friend 
our mutual friend or whatever, Vinny, who's like a super close homie of mine. Uh, he's all right, but like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but he, but like, like, uh, he was staying at my house and, uh, uh, we, yeah, so we just like, it just got done that way. But he told me, he's like, you should play that for Mac, that beat. And I was like, okay. And, uh, I did that. But when I did that, he was sleeping on the couch. Like, like he just passes out all the time. So you're just like sleeping on the couch. And, uh, but yeah, we did the song. It was like crazy. Yeah, it was a crazy moment. Yeah, he seemed like he seemed like such a cool dude, man. Like you know, what, yeah, he's like waste. Like life. he's young and he's just hella. He gave me like advice that I still, not advice, but just by he's like one of those people that you could be around and just like under started to under like you just understand stuff because he's like, I don't know, like I got. I remember I called the my girlfriend at the time when we were, the night we were recording that song and I told her that like I felt like I could feel the universe like talking to me you know yeah not on no like oh it's mac miller but just on some like i was like addicted to drugs at the time and stuff like and i just like oh okay yeah not like i'm not on some no pity shit i shouldn't yeah. even said that but like it just that in a sound too brash i just like had something that like i had to like pr- like basically like wean off of and it would buy the withdrawals were hella bad you know and yeah. like i was scared to do it because i'd never been in that position before it was an accident you know and whatever and i'm just like oh shit like but uh, we talked so much about that and he had like a uh like a sober coach guy there with him which like uh, it's kind of weird but i guess people do that uh but like yeah i don't know it was just like this whole moment and like thing and i wouldn't get specific about it and i don't think that like anything that anyone says publicly about drugs and stuff is necessarily beneficial to anybody because uh it's just mostly just like uh to put people in jail and to like yeah. make pharmaceutical companies rich you know it's like you can't get health care but you can um and so then you don't get health care but then you, if you buy drugs on the street you, you might get fentanyl like what do you think that's there for you know yeah it's just you obviously know. <laughs> like it's just like crack again you know or it's just like how the government put poison in alcohol and set it out during prohibition just you know what i mean like it's the same shit yep i i know exactly what you mean man it's it's crazy just a hell of like on a tangent uh, yeah. <laughs> but no that, that that i don't know there's like there's yeah the mac thing was super cool and uh yeah the 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 tiny desk he did was amazing uh yeah, yeah i saw that too and yeah he just like a really just yeah he's just super like wise beyond his years type guy and like also it's like he just it's, see i seem like he lived a pretty like full life and that's not up for me to say but i'm just saying it's like a lot of people could live for 100 years and their book won't be as thick as his you know? so, yeah that's the interesting uh, thing about it you know he 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 did what he yeah. was supposed to do on this earth you know yes sir i think he did he represented pretty good for the whites you know <laughs> <laughs> or something you know yeah all right uh tell me about the um the ti the amazing mr f up you know the- uh yeah i i just he just came over with um that was in la and we were in a studio and now he just um um uh, this guy law who's a friend of ours uh uh-huh. works for rock nation or did he was having people come through and like listen to beats and stuff and like trinidad james had come and uh like yeah then ti came and i was and i was working with his son domani so Uh he um i did a lot on his like first album but uh he yeah he was just there like probably just checking the temperature because donnie was hella young at the time so that 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 just i was making that beat and then he told me tip told me to give it to domani so i was like yeah no doubt whatever and then uh he later on it turned out that he's like yeah tip rapped on it someone told me i think ninth or somebody told me uh that he rapped on it and then um yeah then it just went from there and then we had to get it replayed and stuff and originally oh, okay. the sample the, the, they had to get it yeah uh, but you know you know sid from the internet sid from the internet oh yeah, no, the, oh, band the, group the internet yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah 
she she i don't know her but she she did the replay uh of the original replay i still have it but we didn't use it on the album uh for the actual song but oh, okay. the original replay like is just like a different the different melody and stuff but sid did it all and it's just like super tight like <laughs> That's what's uh, up. I uh, still had yeah, your I re- drums. I, re- I remade that one, but yeah, went with the, yeah, same drums and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. That's dope. Yeah, I gotta look that up again. All right, put it out without her authorization. <laughs> what was that? So just put it out without her author- authorization. <laughs> Not that anyone would give a fuck. You know, <laughs> okay, so um, you did the second half of um, the song Cohiba that. Um, uh, Black Thought did on the um, oh yeah the ninth had the first two, one right uh, yeah. how did that come about wait uh uh oh that was just uh one of the text things I think in a conversation with ninth and the Soul Council and stuff like that where he'd be like send beats for Black Thought you know yeah and, uh, <laughs> yeah it was just like that like this, I think you know like nonchalantly you know, just send beats for Black yeah, Thought yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it won't be nonchalant, really, but it'll it won't yeah. be you know. But we over the years we've all kind of learned like what we're supposed to do in that situation through trial and error, you know, you know whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Okay, and for oh, yeah, Anthony Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, the Anthony Hamilton. That was the same Hamilton. type of. That was the same way. I made that record for uh, Crisis. Did one, I think uh for heather i forget the name of the song damn but it's like a nas sample but a replay and so yeah. we we're like we're, we're thinking this angle uh is, maybe it's japan something or something but uh uh we're doing that like for her album so i made i used that mob deep sample like for because i was trying to like i think crisis had used a uh uh nas one or whatever i think it was like maybe the one love sample or something yeah and uh uh like so i was like oh i'll go that route so i did mob deep like whatever but i used that and i sent that to heather for that and i think it ended up on the studio computer and then i'm guessing when anthony hamilton was in north carolina at one point i played him that or something and then that's how it happened but i wasn't there for anything okay that's that's dope how it can happen like that like that was that was originally for heather victoria the, the the you know he heard it but i i like how you how you did it because it you know it feels like r&b but kind of hip-hop at the same time you know i always wanted to put a bridge in in something because like you know how ninth did on destiny's fulfilled or whatever yeah the song girl and like all those they're all samples but they all got bridges but the bridges are also from the samples and it's just like right, i always thought that right. was so high. it's like <laughs> premiere you know it's like premiere doing a bridge sample or something like it just yeah. is like a, a level up in the game of production with samples like in that choppy way i thought it was so sick that you're working with beyonce doing bridges and you sampled like uh like fucking Marlena thing, Shaw, you yeah. know? Or, or like or uh what's the name uh melba moore yeah melba moore yeah, melba melba. Moore, uh for the um yeah for the I think it's is she it the reason ninth live yeah. ninth was ninth was DJing on live on Instagram yesterday and she was just in the chat like yeah ninth like Melba Moore wow. <laughs> yeah that's, like what that's amazing man ninth knows <laughs> everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah and uh since you've worked with um so many artists in your career your style is so diverse like is there anybody that you um want to work with that people might see as an unexpected collab uh want to work with yeah that you haven't worked with yet myself yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty much it collab with yourself (laughs) well i mean singing now and stuff i don't think like i think i could branch out to like any arena of music but i I mean this is probably the most extreme yeah i'm I'm looking forward to like, hearing it you know, hearing you know hearing you singing and stuff like that's yeah it'll be good yeah at least that's it'll the plan good. right <laughs> no i already know it. like i mean I, i've recorded i have stuff but i just haven't put nothing out but like i I send like little snippets to people here and there and i'm like it's good like it and yeah you, you can't not be good at this point because it's like I don't know. It's like, I'm going to make it good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to just make it shitty, you know? <laughs> is there is there a like a freedom that you get from like a project? Like, um, 
your uh, Eric invented the remix where you can just match your favorite acapellas with your beats, not have to worry about, you know, business yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Like, that's a part of, it was all like, I didn't know it at the time, but it, it's all like, kind of like under the umbrella of like learning. Cause it's like, then you start to realize like your ear gets developed in a way if you're doing R&B ones and stuff. Like I would just play yeah. the acapella, then I would scroll through the beats. And then once I heard they matched, like the, the keys matched, like, I don't know how, yeah. but you know, you just, it sounds right. Yeah. It, it like, it, it really helps you develop like uh, an ear to be, it's like a lot of kids now, it's like, like they're going to be, I don't want to be like the kids now guy, but uh, <laughs> a lot of people are going to be using software to, to like a crazy extent like to where it's like ain't nobody gonna be playing like fucking it, all instruments or, or something like that you know what i mean it's, it's gonna like, make it it's gonna make it too easy because but i mean but, but it's, be but like... for the end product but it's like if that yeah. person was to go do a show would be like what the fuck like so like like i'm saying like um there's no there's no evolving curve with learning uh to play instruments you know what i'm saying like there's no right that like since like beethoven or whatever it's probably just been the same you know? yeah so that's like it's just the ultimate like solid form of the medium you know yeah and i've um i've seen on your ig it says um rainy day toys 210 24. um is that a new project that you're uh releasing yeah, that's that's like gonna i think that's the name i have a couple names for different things but that's like the name of my album that uh uh i'm gonna be like the first thing i put out that's like me singing and like writing the music and stuff okay and but yeah the release date is 20 years after college dropout came out to the day so it's also another thing like that you know because college dropout was uh february 10th 2004 Four. and so okay. it'll be yep. february 10th 2024 yeah and and uh, hopefully it'll be on Rock Nation too. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be looking out for that. And um, is there are there any other um, projects that you can talk about that you're um, that you're currently working on? Like like I'm I'm working Rhapsody's doing the hello shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but like, right. now, that's her. That's that's for her to talk about. But like uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely look for her things. But like as far as anything else, like I'm like. I'm just, I'm producing this guy now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. Me, yeah. All right, and, and Eric G, I've I've enjoyed talking with you uh, on this podcast. Um, yes, just sir. like, you know, and for anybody that um, you know is looking for beats, um, wants to hear more of your music, what's the best ways that they can reach out to you? Uh, Patreon.com slash Eric G G G. That's where I, I, I post in like a bunch of like, like I post drums and different like freestyles. I, what a freestyle is basically just I play drums and then uh -huh. I'll play the piano over it. Then I'll play bass or like whatever over it. Now I'll just post it. But like, I'm just doing like a, like a, like a stream of like the shit that I'm doing, learning how to record and sing and stuff like that. So if you sign up for the Patreon, you'll be able to like go there and like every day I'll post something or like how I write music. I don't know, just to yeah. have like a lens on that. And then uh, I also have all my, there's like 2000 something beats up there, like 33 albums or something like that of uh, just stuff that like, it's secret SoundCloud, SoundCloud links, but they're posted on the, the feed of the Patreon. But then also Eric GGG on Instagram and that's pretty much it. Okay, that's awesome, man. I, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, man. You know. Likewise, thanks for thanks for fun. listening to me. Fucking, yeah, <laughs> <thank> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I'm glad that I got like I'm glad that we made it happen because uh yeah. Yeah. Yep, we made it happen, man. I, I appreciate it, man. And I was just like trying to make it overcomplicated. <laughs> and then you're just like, like, no. And then I went through all the stuff. And they're like, let's do it this way. And then you're like, how about we just yeah, do yeah. it exactly oh, yeah. how I was going to do it? I sent you the link. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, no, that's you, dope, man. though, man. I, uh, yeah, like looking forward to more music from you, man. And, and Me too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I need to, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I really am, though, because like th this, this this like recording me like i have i remember when like, i was like a little kid like like literally like three years old like i remember like pots and pans like playing drums like that and stuff but then like i always knew that like i went like 
I don't know. I just always knew that this is what I am and stuff. And it's like, it's almost, it, I was selling rap the other day. Actually, it's too personal. But I, I just say, like, I feel like it's God given, you know? It's like crazy. Yeah, you're like, born to do it, man. That's, you, that's, born to do it, but didn't realize it. Like, I realized it, but but God, like, did a whole nother thing recently. And it's just crazy, you know? And yeah. It's, uh, really, it's really like, like, I'm just taking it in. Like, I can't, I feel so blessed to be able to do these play these things and do this and record it and like express myself that way and i can paint and stuff like i'm just really happy right now and i and uh excited to share that you know that's awesome man yep yep dope dope music man <laughs> yeah. all right man well all right so. man no no you've been yeah. busy and stuff <laughs> man let you get get back to doing what you gotta do just watching TV, but then it's like the shit. Uh, just, it's, everything's ready. You know? Yeah. No, I'm 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 recording like hella diligently, and I have way too many ideas to manage. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy that people like mildly pay attention to me. That's what I'm, like I, just because there's no way I'd be doing anything else. I'll be Jamie Fox under the bridge, like that movie where he plays cello. You know? Like, uh huh. Yeah. Like the homeless guy or whatever like that i'll be that before i go like work a job at this point and i don't mean that to be entitled i mean that to be like even though people will still say that is entitled and stuff i don't mean it like that i just mean that it's not that's not what I, i'm not gonna it's waste my passion. time doing something. i'm not Probably yeah i'm not i'm not here for that like and it's not entitlement it's not whatever you just leave me alone if, it, if that's the case but it's like i'm i'm doing i'm lucky enough to know that that, that that i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing so like i ain't gonna go make no whatever i'll just like i'll just figure it out for the people that understand me they'll help me until until i can help them you know right right yeah that's super dope man you i think you dropped dropped a lot of you know a lot of gems for people on this on this podcast you know they they can they can hear and get something from it it's valuable you know so that's what's up (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, Godspeed with your podcast, Dougie. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, hit me back up. Let me let me uh, hit the gym. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Peace. All right. Peace, man. <laughs> what do I do? Do I just close it? <laughs> That'll yeah, be the. Cool. You should just. Yeah. Hey, don't don't become like Vlad TV. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, but thank you, man, for real. I, I, that was. All right, thank you, man. You. And you have a yeah, great, thanks. great rest of your night, man. Yeah, text me, holla. Okay, I will, Later. man.